Message from Neil from Real Terrain Hobbies. What's he sending me? Hey guys, this is Neil here with Real Terrain Hobbies, and today we're gonna make a What's it working on? using a 3D printer. I've got one of them. Ooh, something in the woods. Oh. Hey guys, this is Neil here with Real Terrain Hobbies and today we're gonna make a sweet diorama using a 3D printer. And if you're wondering what was going on at the beginning there, that is Luke from Luke's APS. And he and I coincidentally decided to make a diorama using the exact same character and model at the exact same time and we decided to make a collab out of it. So go check his video out and be sure to subscribe. All right guys, yes, you heard me right, a 3D printer. So how are we gonna make a diorama using a 3D printer? Isn't that cheating? Well, no, we're gonna make a traditional diorama the way we always do, uh, with some pretty sweet effects in there and everything. But what I'm gonna be using this for is a special character in that diorama. And what I wanna make is a character from one of my favorite RPGs of all time, the Witcher series, uh, so Geralt, of Rivera, Riviera, Rivi, Rive? Of f***ing Rivia. Oh. So, that's what we're gonna be using this for. We gotta open this thing up. I've never used, ever used a 3D printer, obviously, ever. So we're gonna open this thing up together and see if we can get this figured out. So yes, the printer I have here is the Anycubic Photon. This was sent to me by Anycubic. And uh, this is the first, like I said, 3D printer I've ever had. This is a resin printer, which means that it uses liquid resin as opposed to filament. There's filament printers and then there's resin. So I have the resin here. You have to be very careful with the stuff. The resin is toxic, but they do give you plenty of gloves to wear along with a mask for the odors and um, yeah so I'm very excited for this thing and I'm really curious to see what we can end up doing with this. So immediately right off the bat, I'm noticing that this thing is very well built, much better built than I was expecting actually. Uh, so let's see what we got inside. There oh, some more foam. All right, so I have no idea what all the technicality, technical uh, terms are for everything in here, but I'm guessing this here uh, is some sort of thing that goes on like this, something like that. But uh, yeah, let's put that there. Is there film on here? Can that, oh yeah. Uh, let's get that off like that. All right, so we got the photon all set up. I'm ready to do my first print. 
Uh, a little nervous, not too bad. A lot of people are really nervous on their first 3D print. I'm excited, really excited. Uh, I got my USB stick in here. I just transferred the file from my computer over there onto the USB, into the printer. There's a little menu here, a little menu screen. You can select your print right there. There's a play button. I don't want to push that yet. I don't even have my resin in there yet. So I'm going to put the resin in. I'm going to get my gloves on, mask. This stuff is highly toxic, so make sure you have these things on. So I'm going to do that, put the resin in, and push play, and we'll see what happens. All right, so of course I go to push play and we got a wrong file format. So I gotta figure that out back to the computer. Okay, problem solved. So what I had done is on the slicer program, Chidu Box, uh, I did not have the proper printer selected to get the right uh, file or the, uh, or the file output for the uh, file itself. Yeah, so anyway, I think we got it now. <laughs> I'm gonna install this thing again here. Let's see what happens. I just want to give a big shout out to the artist that made this Geralt model. Uh, you can go and check his uh, website out on ArtStation and you can see here this is the exact model that I'm using. And if you want to purchase it for your printer, uh, purchase the files, go to CG Trader and get it there. And you'll have this exact model, which you'll see later on is packed full of detail. So go check his webpage out and purchase the model if you're interested in making something similar to this. So once your print has completed, it's a matter of taking it off of the plate and cleaning it off with isopropyl alcohol. Now, this is not the best way of doing things if you really want to get a good grasp of the ins and outs of 3D printing. Check out Danny from 3D Printed Tabletop and his channel has absolutely everything about 3D printers. He recently did a collaboration with Jeremy from Black Magic Craft and they did an awesome overview of all the ins and outs when starting with your very first 3D printer. All right, so we're gonna put the 3D printing off to the side for now and move on to the actual building of the diorama itself. So for the base of my models or my pieces, gaming pieces, dioramas, whatever I'm making, I usually tend to go with uh, about an eighth of an inch uh, thick MDF particle board. This is my go-to. So now I'm gonna be gluing on a whole bunch of styrofoam here. These are scrap pieces that I had kind of over time. They've slowly built up. And this is the perfect way to use them to make some hills. Uh, so all I'm doing here is using PL Premium. That is the glue that I use. It's uh, also called liquid nails in other countries. And there's various different forms uh, with different names across the globe. But this stuff does not shrink and uh, it's a great adhesive, sticks to anything. Uh, so that's what I'm using here and just building up these hills, which will be later covered or in a minute here covered with sculpt mold as you will see very shortly.
So before even getting to this stage, there is one very important step that I missed. And uh, this is hugely important. It's something I did in the Wizard Tower build when I was preparing the MBF base, and that is nailing it to some straight, rigid wooden slats. Now, the point of that is to stop this MDF from warping. So we're going to be using Sculpt Mold. As you can see here, this is a different brand of the stuff, but it's the same thing. And so basically, this is kind of a paper mache type material. You see Luke Tillman using this stuff all the time. And so I'm going to be covering up my styrofoam chunks here, as you can see, with the stuff to make my hills. Uh, but it's going on fairly thick but when this and very wet and this stuff takes days to dry but when this dries this stuff shrinks and it's actually permeating and soaking right into that mdf as well and then when it dries it shrinks and then things are not good so you'll see in a bit here what happens to this or what had happened and man it was not pretty Hey guys, so we're gonna be doing something a little different here. We're just taking a walk. And a lot of the time, you don't need to spend a ton of money on like scenic products and uh, hobby shop stuff. You can go and find all this stuff right in your own backyard. This is just a little ways out from my house here. We're out in the country. Uh, we're gonna get some fall stuff. I'm making this winter scene. So we're gonna get some leaves, crack that up some branches, um, even some dirt, maybe some, uh, what you might call it, some roots and stuff. So we're gonna be doing a bunch of that and enjoying the outdoors too while we're at it. Here goes a guy on a dirt bike. <laughs> so yeah, like, it's awesome. Just being out here, getting out, being inspired too. Being here with the dog, the kids. Wave guys. Got the kids back there, they're helping me out find a bunch of things, so just making it a, a little a little bit enjoying the outdoors before it gets too cold to do something like this. So yeah, I'd encourage you yourself, go out and do this, enjoy it. Don't spend you don't need to be spending hundreds of dollars on terrain stuff. You can just go out here, get it all on your own, and uh, get some inspiration while you're at it. All right, let's go find some stuff, all right? Oh yes, you're so fierce, Charlie. I don't know what you see out there. Okay, Charlie. All right, let's start gathering some leaves. Let's put a little bit in there, some really crunchy ones. Okay guys, we came upon a little gem here. This is a root ball from a tree that was dug up. They uh, probably by the railroad here or maybe the power line guys, somebody. And as you can see, a root ball from a tree. That's where the tree was cut off there. And then on here, there's just a ton of all the little tiny roots. 
There's this guy right here. Here, Levi, do you want to hold this so I can get it in focus? Whoa. Here, let me just grab this for me. So hold it up a little higher above your head so I can see behind you. So that there, that's a beautiful little tree in itself. Perfect, perfect scale tree. Look at all the little branches and things. We can make that into a full, full tree. What do you think? Mm. Yeah? It's cool. It's cool, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Okay, and we got Cameron over here. What are you working on, Cam? Um, roots. Roots? Yes, more roots. All these here, you wanna get some of this stuff? So these are gonna act as actual tree roots on the diorama. It's gonna be awesome, hey? Eh? Yes, put them in there. All right, guys, I think we found enough. You ready to head her back? Yeah. Yeah? Awesome. Let's do it. All right, let's go, guys. All right, so here we are. Obviously, things have warped big time. Uh, I had thought the uh, sculpt mold was quite dry 
but I don't think it was fully dry. And then on top of that, there was the resin, which also shrunk as it cured. Uh, those two things combined together caused this thing to just completely, basically turn into a bowl on the bottom. So this is quite devastating actually, and I ended up putting this thing off on my shelf for quite a while, and uh, it was actually a long time before I finally got back to it and fixing up the base here. So what we're going to be doing is creating a brand new base, new bottom for this, gluing the warped bowl on top, and then filling that in afterwards. All right, so here we are. As you can see, the glue has dried and we have our gaps ready to be filled with sculpt mold So I need to fill this in yet. I'm gonna, um, with uh, some like filler, I don't want it completely chock full of sculpt mold. Otherwise, it's gonna take forever to dry. So I'm gonna stuff some either tin foil or some paper in there just to, as a filler. So we're gonna get this fixed up uh, and done with the same texture on there once the sculpt the mold is dry and get the nice ground texture going so that is where we are with this guy now so i'm about to get started on that and also i am you can see we're just waiting whew, stinks waiting for uh the primer to dry on our witcher so that's where i'm at and uh it's time to re finish repairing this. The resin that I just added has dried and it didn't do any more warping. So hopefully there's going to be minimal warping when we put in the rest of this sculpt mold, which should be fine because it's going to be a thin, thin layer. Okay, so let's go get at it. So yeah, this was actually kind of a bit of a daunting task. Um, before I started doing this, this actually did uh, sit on the shelf for quite a while. And my motivation to get this done had completely dropped. So yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I knew that I might eventually come back to it. And so I kept it on the shelf. I was very tempted several times to just completely throw it in the garbage. But I'm glad that I didn't. Uh, this actually wasn't that big of a deal, having to put this new base on, throw in some more, throw on some more sculpt mold, and work with it that way. So it turned out really good, and yeah, happy I kept it. So I made a little extra step here and I ended up painting the sculpt mold this time. I didn't do that initially and I just covered it with the peat moss and the grout and all that. This time I figured I'd cover up that white just in case anything shone through and uh, added again the peat moss onto that. And I actually didn't want this entire thing to be completely just entirely peat moss all the way around. It's got some depth, though obviously this is in kind of a natural looking hill. We are kind of looking underground. Uh, so because of that fact, I instead of going straight peat moss, I also added in some dirt. And this is the dirt that uh, we gathered back in the forest there or in the fields out in the backyard, as you can see here. And this really added a lot. I'm really kind of happy that I went with that. And yeah, he just... Put it on like anything else flocking peat moss and add your glue now here i just want to mention i give a quick shout out to woodland scenics they sent me this static grass applicator thought i'd give it a little try in this video i'm going to be using it more in the future 
And uh, I was kind of happy with it. Uh, it wasn't as tough as I thought it was going to be to use. Results are pretty good. And um, yeah, so it is a little on the expensive side. It's $100 Canadian. But uh, from what I've heard, it's a really good one. And, um, you know, you can get really high-grade professional ones that are into hundreds and hundreds of dollars, so I'm told. Um, so I would recommend it. So, yes, we're adding in some trees now. And these are actually from a small bush we have out in the country here called sagebrush. Sage brush, brush makes uh, some amazingly realistic looking miniature trees. You can see the detail in them. It's incredible. You get uh, tiny little knots and things that you would see in real size trees. So these things really made the whole scene what it is. And uh, yeah, so sagebrush, if you happen to have any in your area, go out and grab some and you'll be happy that you did. And so I added some flocking. Now these are the crushed leaves actually that we collected. I ended up using a coffee grinder for these. And this is, I think, Luke Toen's method. Uh, I got the idea from him and it looks awesome. Great ground foliage, really realistic looking. And this combined with the static grass, the peat moss, the dirt and the flocking really, really finished it off nicely. So things are coming along, we're getting close here and are starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm all set up for painting here. I got all these guys. These are uh, my Vallejo, everything here. Well, this is all Vallejo. These are all air paints. There's some that are uh, for base coating, which are a thicker paint. And then the air, air brush paints actually are a lot thinner but I find they still do a really good job of covering the model. So this is what I've got here. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a painter, I'm not a mini painting uh, channel, so I'm no professional. I'm a little, quite nervous about this. I have painted minis before, uh, but if you wanna know how to really paint good minis, I highly suggest channels like um, Brent from Goobertown Hobbies, Emil from uh, Squidmar Miniatures, Awesome guys, and also uh, Miniac. He's the big one. He's an awesome guy, awesome channel. I'd recommend those guys. And there's uh, many more as well, um, but those are the ones I know and those are the guys I've gotten to know kind of actually recently here. So um, anyway, I'm gonna be attempting to do this and um, nervous. I'm gonna start with the head, the most critical of them all. I probably should do this last, but I have, I don't know. I really want to do the head first because I'm, I'm eager to do that. So anyway, let's get to painting. Okay, so as I said, I am not a painter. I have done some miniatures in the past, but uh, I don't have all the techniques and all of that down. So what I'm doing here is, uh, it's a, I think it's a technique called underpainting. I actually got this uh, from an awesome miniature painting channel called Dana Howell, so shout out to her. Basically, you do the black first and then white on top, uh, top down, and it kind of leaves the dark shadows below. And then you put your color on top of that and it kind of creates the illusion of shadows and, and darker areas and whatnot. So that's what I'm doing there. And I'm using my airbrush. This model is a little bit bigger than a standard mini. Um, so it was even kind of a little bit more intimidating to me because usually you should be able to put more detail into it. But there's the head. I was pretty happy with it. Up close, it kind of looks a little grainy, but it, I, was, I was more or less good with that. And then what I did for the rest of the armor is just color in each of the uh, different parts. Not too difficult. You just do a base coat on those. I did a wash on top of that and did some minor highlighting so that was kind of most of it for painting now what i want to do with this you saw at the beginning that there is a fireplace with actual lighting so that's what i'm doing now and uh, i got these leds just off ebay they're flickering leds they work awesome so i'm putting two in here you just hook them up to a nine volt battery 
and there they go. They flicker all on their own, and they look awesome. They're nice and small. And uh, there's a tea light method out there that a lot of people like to use, but if you want need something a little more condensed, this is perfect. Now it's just a matter of making the fire using regular stones. You do want these things to be a little blackened up. Uh, here they are the wood and the stones. This thing is the, I want to make it as realistic as possible obviously. So the stones got to be blackened up a bit. The wood is black and uh, just from the smoke and everything. So that's what I'm doing here. Now, white is a big one. White, when wood is heated up, the charcoal is heated up, it turns white. You know, ashes are white. Uh, so this is, goes a long way into making things look really realistic. I was considering putting smoke here too of some sort of um, like a cotton smoke and you can paint the cotton, but I, I want it to be a little more realistic cotton. Uh, I never went for it. Maybe in the future I will. But now I'm getting my Dremel kit here. This is the kit I use. It's an awesome kit. And I'm going to be cutting out the base to fit the battery here so everything can be nice and tidy and hidden. Cut out the opening and then all I'm going to do once that is cut out is just stuff the battery up there with the wires and tape it back up. And that's the perfect, perfect solution. So because there were two bases to this uh, from the old warped one, I got to dig that out too. And really all I'm doing is digging out some of the styrofoam on this just to yeah, make a spot for both the cables and the battery to fit. And it's as easy as that. So if you know anything about a witcher, a witcher is nothing without his swords. These are kind of the last thing that I've got to do here. I'm just painting these guys up again, putting a base coat down, putting some silver and some metallics on there, adding a wash. And I use a Citadel wash for those of you who don't know much about washes. Citadel, it's kind of, it's a, um, washes are a mixture kind of a varnish and inks and the, it's much more effective than just watering paint down. So that's what I used. Everything is done now. It's just a matter of taking off the toothpicks for holding everything and we get to gluing things together and that's it that's our witcher that's the project and yeah i'm quite happy with how he's looking i think i think i did all right painting was very intimidating i'm not gonna lie uh but all said and done I just plugged away, kept at it. I actually redid the face twice. I used paint thinner and uh, yeah, it all worked out in the end. And here it is in all its glory, the finished diorama, the Witcher, Geralt of Rivia. <laughs> Rivia. Um, yeah, this was this close, this close to having this thing completely thrown out. This actually sat when it was in its bowl shape, sat on my shelf for like a good month, not getting touched. Luckily, I decided to keep it around and it worked out perfect with uh, the 3D printer to do a little diorama like this. We managed to salvage it. And yeah, so if you ever have kind of a failed project that you think has failed, keep it around and you might want to bring it back someday. So that's what I did. I'm happy I did. And um, yeah, so uh, also Luke, Luke from Luke's APS at the beginning there, uh, go out and check his channel. He, uh, it was a complete fluke that we actually, we talk on Discord actually, and it was a complete fluke that we ended up doing the pretty much exact same diorama or at least the same 3D printed character, a Witcher scene or Witcher themed scene with Geralt kneeling. So it's pretty funny and we decided to do an entire collaboration out of it. And um, yeah, so go check his channel out. He's an awesome guy. But uh, yeah, other than that, uh, if you are enjoying the channel and you wanna see this thing continue to grow, 
head over to my Patreon and you can subscribe there. You can sign up and help support the channel. And it really, really is going to go a long way into helping me do this long term and get things growing. And uh, it would just be awesome if you could do that. Uh, a big thank you to all my patrons who are there already. It's actually a pretty small, small little Patreon kind of group. So if you want to help me to make it bigger, it's one of the smaller ones out there. That'd be awesome. And it would go a long way and I'd really appreciate it. But um, anyway, that's it for this one. Uh, there's going to be a lot more coming up in the next couple months here. I'm going to be buckling down. It's not going to be a giant, giant gap like this video was from the last one. Uh, so stay tuned. So here are some close-ups and I'll be seeing you on the next one. See ya. Hey buddy. Hey Luke, how's it going? Good, good. Oh, I just finished my diorama, my latest project here. I'm a little excited. Thought I'd give you a holler and show it off to you. Yeah? Are you ready for this? It's pretty sweet. Let me... Are you uploading a video to destroy me on YouTube? Is that what you're doing? To destroy you? Yeah, that's right. Finally. Yeah, this is going to be big. It's been a while, so... Let's see. So check it out. Got a sweet dial there. You put water effects on it as well. Yeah, we got some water, got some trees and stuff. Got some static grass there. Nice. All right, and then we're going up the path a little bit. We got a nice little fire. I'll show you something sweet with that in a sec. And then we got our buddy Hang on. Geralt here. Hang on. That's, that's, that's Geralt praying, isn't it? Yeah, that's Geralt. Pretty sweet, eh? What do you think? That's, that's what I'm doing on Friday. What? What? <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing Geralt kneeling in the woods with Elisha behind him. No. Yep. The, you're doing Geralt kneeling, doing his little meditation thing. When I finally get my, uh, my, <laughs> my, <laughs> it's been what? I don't know how many months it's been since I've posted. And you're going to do the exact same thing. Same week. <laughs> no way. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, I just printed mine off. I just got my printer there, and I thought, hey, let's do a, let's do a Witcher scene. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> there's a 3D printer. I think, I, think, I think we're on the same boat and the same lines. Oh, that's pretty funny. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure people will like it. They'll like me. <laughs> yeah. A different approach. Yeah. <laughs> do you have your, do you got your dial going already too then, or what? Or are you... Yep. Base. Um, and while they've been printing off, because like, I got the dial base done in, in one afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the yeah, I've, I've been printing these off and playing with settings to try and get the best out of it, so I can paint oh, yeah. nice for the dial. Um, well, hang on, I got one. <laughs> okay, I got one thing I'm gonna show you. Now you can't copy me for this. I'm kind of nervous right. about showing this to you, but so we got him by his little fire there. Is yours gonna be doing this? Hang on. Uh, oh, oh, come on. One sec. Oh, and on. check that out, eh? Yeah, you've topped you've top me there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, real, good. Real terrain hobby destroys the internet with LED. Yeah, that's right. <laughs>
Oh man, too funny. Yeah, well, it's it's funny what we funny how we do it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Same thought processes. We've been sent some printers. What's what's popular at the moment? Which uh, I guess so. Yep. Yeah. What happens? Yeah, I should have just done Baby Yoda like Jeremy and Brant and all those guys. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got I'll, we got I'll, Geralt I'll, instead. We'll Probably, yeah. <laughs> Too funny. We'll see. All right. Well, my yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds good, man. Yeah. Sounds good. All righty. <laughs>